This year has been an explosive one for the EV market with several new options for practical all electric cars benefiting you, the consumer. Now the car next to me, the Polestar 2, was not the first to market, but it did get here before the latest round of competition from Toyota, Hyundai, Kia, and even a few of this car's siblings over at Volvo. So in today's Inside EVs review, I'm gonna answer a very simple question. How does the Polestar 2 stack up against those new competitors, and who is the right buyer for this car? The car we're using in today's review is a 2022 model year, which makes sense because we're driving it in the middle of the year. But if you go over to Polestar right now and start configuring one, it's going to be for the 23 model year. And that's relevant because there are changes in how you can spec the car. I'll be sure to outline all of those as we go along. Let's talk about the design just for a second. I mean, this has been on the road for a few years. You're probably familiar with it by now, but there are a few things worth pointing out. The spec in particular is very Batman, all black outside, all black inside. I like that the Polestar 2 looks like a car. I know that might seem silly to say, but a lot of its new competitors are more traditional hatchback shape. This does have a hatch, but with that short rear deck, it looks like an actual sedan. I like that. Then there's some unique details. This sticker right here, this little Polestar 2 sticker is the only place on the entire car that it actually says Polestar 2. But if you look closely, it also shows you the battery information. It's a little bit nerdy, but I just kind of like it as a principle. And we get these frameless mirrors which just look very sleek and same goes with these door handles. Volvo, Polestar as a whole, they love forward thinking design and the Polestar 2 just wears that so well. Welcome to the inside of the Polestar Batmobile. Just take a look at this interior. Everything about it is very alternative, but I don't mean that as a bad thing. It just looks so cool, so different. All the material choices are just things that you don't see in mainstream vehicles, and I love that about this car. It makes it feel special, makes it feel unique. It's a little monotone. There's just black everywhere in here. There's black matte wood trim, which is very pretty, but it's surrounded by black materials, including this material on the seats, which is actually great. It comes with the plus package. There is an option for ventilated Napa leather seats, which would be a nice thing, but that's $4,000, which is too much money to spend. So keep things simple. Uh, with that Napa leather, you do get the option of a lighter wood trim, which I think would do a lot for making this interior feel a little bit brighter, but overall it's just wonderful. There are a few weird concessions when it comes to practicality or just head scratchers in general. The glass roof, for example, also part of the plus package. I love having it, but it is criminal that it doesn't come with a sunshade to knock out some of the lighting. You have to get that as a separate accessory. Then there's the cup holder. Seems like a small thing, right? This is the armrest where you want it driving along but if you have a drink, you have to slide this back and suddenly it's where your elbow should go. And if your passenger has an additional drink, you have to lift up the center console to make room for both drinks. It's just kind of weird. Then we get to lack of practicality in the back seat. That is by far, I think, the worst thing about the Polestar 2. You give up a lot of space compared to other vehicles. We just reviewed the Hyundai Ioniq 5, for example. That back seat felt huge. The chairs were at a really nice recline. It was just very comfortable on the road. This is a lot more cramped and the seats are very upright. So you don't want passengers back there for too long. But friends, this is the crown jewel of the Polestar experience, the infotainment. You sign in with your Google account and everything is just easy to use. Maps, for example, Google Maps, just like you use on your phone. Same sort of way of putting in an address. Once you have something in there, it accounts for traffic. It tells you what charge you have when you get there. It's very easy and it's just quick. The maps also transfer to the instrument cluster right in front of you. So you can put something else like your music on the screen uh, as you're using your navigation. Speaking of music, you go back to the main menu and you can download apps from Google Play Store like Spotify, for example. So this is a full integration with Spotify. You can see it just like you would on your phone. And last up, the car's settings. You just hit the Polestar icon right here. You can change the steering feel, one pedal driving, which is a feature I love having in EVs. You can have it go all the way down to a stop or you can turn it completely off if you don't like it. The driver assistance systems, it's a big, easy to follow menu, and you can turn off things like the lane keeping assistant, for example, which is really overactive in this car. But you turn it off one time, the next time you get into the vehicle, it's done and taken care of. It's just an easy system to learn. It's really the best thing about living with this car day to day. This is the dual motor version of the Polestar 2. That means 408 horsepower, 487 pound-feet of torque, and zero to 60 in a claimed 4.4 seconds. So in reality, <laughs> it 
Oh my God, it is fast. It, this is a legitimately quick EV. There's a single motor version of this car too, but that has 231 horsepower. So there's quite a discrepancy between the two. Interestingly enough, Polestar will also sell you a performance package. This car doesn't have it, but it costs $5,500. And with it, you get manually adjustable Allings dampers, Brembo brakes, and for the first time ever, an actual bump in power. It now comes with 68 horsepower as an upgrade for the 23 model year. But if you've purchased a dual motor version of this car in the past, Polestar will give you the option to purchase that later this year. Though from where I'm sitting, you have to be crazy to want 68 more horsepower out of this car. It's, it's really a thrill to drive. It handles well too. It does okay in dynamic situations. The tires actually feel up to the task of holding on. The steering feel, I have it in the heaviest mode and it gives very good feedback too. And generally it's just very easy to control despite being a heavy car and all electric. The problem with this car is the ride quality. It gives you quite a bit of fuss up and down on anything less than an absolutely perfect road. Now, I would understand that if this was the performance package with a really aggressive damper, but this isn't. So if you don't opt for that, I think they should have given you a slightly more compliant ride quality. I would trade some of this car's dynamic ability uh, for more livability in everyday situations. But overall, very, very fun to drive. Well done, Polestar. Now that we're plugged in at our favorite Electrify America station, let's talk about the important stuff, range and charging. This version of the Polestar 2 has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack and 75 kilowatt hours of that is usable. According to the EPA, it will do 249 miles of range, but here's the interesting part. This car is equipped with the heat pump as part of the plus package, which is another reason why I think that options pack makes a lot of sense. That helps out with the conditioning of the battery and ultimately gives this car better range. Polestar has a software update coming out that is going to increase this car's range up to 260 when that update goes through. That means it's only gonna be 10 miles shy of the single motor. So really, yes, you have to commit to the price difference, but you're getting a lot more power and effectively the same range for not all that much more money. I'm looking at charging at a level two home charger system running 16 amps. This will do eight hours, so pretty standard right there. And when it comes to level three fast charging, just like we have now, this car will do 10 to 80% in 33 minutes. Polestar has improved the peak charging rate to 155 kilowatts, which is certainly not the best. The Hyundai and Kia come to mind. They can do much more than that. But most Electrify America stations have 150 kilowatt machines. So you're at the maximum of what the machine is capable of doing anyway. All things told, this does pretty good job of charging considering its battery architecture and the range is good too. The Polestar 2 is not an outright favorite in the EV space, but it's so good at so many things. If you're okay with the smaller interior and some abstract design choices, this is an exceptional car to drive with some fantastic technology to go with it. 